Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the full review of the Cubot X18 Plus. So this is a Cubot phone. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Cubot, but they don't really make many high-end phones. Many of their phones are mid-range to low-end, but the advantage is that Cubot phones, you can expect a certain level of quality from them. For example, you can expect a certain level of uh, software quality, you know, it's gonna be free from bugs. There's gonna be a certain hardware quality as well. Cubot is a very conscientious company that really makes sure their phones are very good for launch, unlike other companies that might have a few bugs in their phones, you know, here and there, or some things might not work properly, or some features that they advertise are not actually there. Cubot, in that respect, is very good. This is a, at best, a mid-range phone. It has the MTK6750 processor. It's got four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, as well as a 20 megapixel camera and a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. So all those combined make this a fairly decent mid-range phone. I kind of wish it had a Helio P23 processor, but you know what? Cubot's not there yet, and hopefully they will be there soon. So let's go through this phone and see how good it is. So let's talk about the build quality first. The Cubot X18 Plus is made of plastic, so it doesn't feel too great. It's also glossy plastic on the back, which means it attracts fingerprints very easily. And it's also gets a little grimy, especially when you're using it after maybe eating like KFC, then the back's gonna feel really grimy and it's not gonna feel very good. So I'm not too fond of this sort of glossy plastic. I'm more the matte plastic life. That is what I like, matte rubbery plastic, especially on the OnePlus One. That was my favorite. And I hope more companies use that instead of glossy plastic here. The rest of the phone's pretty standard. You have your dual cameras up top, fingerprint sensor. You have your two buttons. You also have a headphone jack, which is very rare and you also have micro USB, not USB-C. So now let's talk about the best feature of this phone and that would be the bezels. Let me open Play Store so you can see it easier. So if you look at this phone right now, let me hold it properly. Um, the, the bezels on this phone are pretty small, um, especially for a budget phone. The top and the bottom bezels are actually not too big. They're actually fairly small. They're not too, they're not as small as the Elephone U Pro, but they are decent. The side bezels are a little bit bigger, but still the bezels on the Cubot X18 Plus are very tiny, and they really make this phone look very good, especially if you're looking for a cheap bezel-less device that you don't have to spend a lot of money on. So yeah, I really like the look of the Cubot X18 Plus, and Cubot did a great job making this phone look great. So let's talk a little bit about the display here. The Cubot X18 Plus has a 18x9, 2160 by 1080 uh, resolution, which is actually pretty good. The display here is an LCD display and it's not bad, I would say, but it's not the best. So for example, more expensive phones like the Elephone U Pro with an AMOLED display is smart as a Nut Pro 2, which has an amazing LCD display, super high contrast, super bright. One of the most beautiful LCD displays I've used for a long time and possibly even ever. The Cubot X18 Plus on the other hand is decent, but it's not amazing. So you get some okay color saturation and color reproduction. Um, you also get some uh, pretty good contrast. So I don't think anyone is gonna have a problem with this display, unless you're one of those crazy people who needs the best display in the world. Then again, it will satisfy pretty much 99.9% .9 of people out there who are looking for a decent display just to you know watch TV, look at photos, and maybe watch some movies as well. The last thing I wanna talk about is that the touch sensitivity on this phone is good but it's not the best so for example phones like my Mi Note 3 phones like the smart as a nut pro 2 those two have great touch sensitivity the screen on this doesn't have as good touch sensitivity as those but it does have good enough sensitivity that you're not going to complain let's talk about the audio on the cubot x18 plus the audio here is okay um you get some pretty good volume which is nice you also get some a little bit of bass which is actually kind of surprising you get some mids and highs so i really would say that this display here is definitely good enough for most people i will say that it's not the best uh speaker i've ever heard the smart as a nut pro 2 holds that distinction it has so much body in the audio this does not have a lot of body um, in the audio so it's not as you know quote unquote lifelike as you would like but i will say that it is good enough if you're watching a tv show you're watching a movie or you're just watching youtube you don't really have uh, any complaints with this uh, speaker here. And listening to music is also pretty good as well. Not the greatest experience, but it's, you know, it's okay. Whatever it 
The battery life here is not bad. You get six hours of screen on time, which is actually pretty good considering it's an MTK 6750 and a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. That SOC is not known for being very efficient. So I have to say that Cubot did a good job with the battery optimization on the Cubot X18 Plus. Otherwise, there was no way they could get six hours of screen on time for the Cubot X18 Plus. And do note that this is actually fairly heavy use. It was YouTube, it was taking photos, and it was also a little bit of browsing credit as well. So it's not, you know, just the social media and stuff like that. Um, it was actually some pretty heavy use considering like YouTube and taking photos. I didn't play any games in that six hour run. Uh, for playing games, I think you could maybe get like three to four hours of gameplay before this thing completely dies, which is actually pretty normal for a phone like this. The other area where Cubot did a good job with battery optimization would be standby battery life. So this thing drops like nothing, like there's no drop at all uh, in standby. You get maybe 1% of drop for every two to three hours, which is very impressive. Again, Cubot, which is known for very good software optimization, at least for a Chinese phone, did a great job here with the uh, standby battery life as well. All right, let's talk about software. The Cubot X18 Plus has Android 8.0 Oreo um, included on this phone, which is actually very impressive. Again, for a, a smaller Chinese manufacturer, having Android 8.0 Oreo on the phone really boosts um, the software confidence. And the other thing as well is that it does support Project Treble. It doesn't support seamless updates according to this app, but it does support Treble, which means that it should receive Android updates in the future a lot faster as well. Now, talking about the actual use for the phone, I would say that it's actually very smooth, especially considering it's using an older MTK6750 processor. It's something that, again, um, you can expect from Cubot that they have some good software optimization. It's very smooth to use, and anything that isn't limited by the CPU is going to be as fast as it can be. For example, swiping on the screen, swiping down notifications, going to settings, everything is fast, and this, and this is gonna be slightly slower than the Pixel 2, which is understandable considering this is not an $800 phone. But then again, they did a great job. However, there is a bottleneck in this uh, phone, and that would be the CPU. The MTK6750 uh, is not very fast. It's kind of old at this point. So the bottleneck you will see in this phone is launching apps. If you are launching a lot of apps, you will see that there is a delay the first time you launch an app. Um, for example, let's say you're gonna launch uh, YouTube. Um, okay, there, there was no delay there because that was already loaded into the RAM. But if you did open it for the first time, there would be a delay bigger than even Snapdragon 625 phones, Helio P20, P23, P25 phones, and Snapdragon 660 phones as well, obviously. But it's not that big a deal. Once it's loaded into RAM, as you saw just now, it opens up instantly, so absolutely no problem there. Multitasking is great. You got four gigs of RAM, no problem. This thing can play games. So I was able to play um, Asphalt Extreme, and it was able to play pretty good um, on the 1080p screen with the older MTK6750. Not a lot of slowdowns, which is fairly impressive as well. Let's quickly talk about the fingerprint sensor on the back of the Cubot X18 Plus. It's not too fast. Um, I don't think it's fast enough for me to use it on a regular basis. I'm used to instant fingerprint sensors like on the Mi Note 3, on the OnePlus 5T, and on the Smarter Zone Pro 2. Those are all fast fingerprint sensors, so I'm not really used to anything slower than that. So unfortunately, I won't be using this, but I'll show you how fast it is. So it's gonna be one, two, three, bang. So as you can see, it took about one second for it to launch, which is, acceptable but it's still not super fast and there are also a couple of uh, quick launch shortcuts that you can do on this phone you can have unique fingerprints that you can put on the back of the phone and if you use that fingerprint to touch the sensor it will launch a specific app that you set in the software over here which is pretty nice as well especially if you want to launch the camera uh, on short notice you want to take a photo you can assign that to a fingerprint and that will work well so let's talk about the network connectivity on this phone. Unfortunately, if you're living in the USA, this is not supported anywhere. And even if it is, it might be supported for just one band in LTE. And I really don't recommend you get this if you are in the USA, just because you don't get that band support that you will need to have it uh, connected everywhere. You're not gonna get any 3G, but you might get 2G, but then again, 2G is not that useful. It's just enough for like phone calls and texts. And you might get LTE for one of, for one of the bands on, I think, Timo, I think. But then again, no, you don't have enough network support on this phone for you to get it. If you're in Canada, it's gonna work on Rogers, 
uh, you're going to get 4G and 2G, but no 3G. So that's a gap there that you have to see if it's worth it, especially if you don't live near areas where 4G is supported a lot. But if you're downtown Toronto, you should still be okay. There will be a few spots here and there where you don't get any 2G, 3G or 4G, but those should be few and far between. And talking about the speeds, the speeds here are pretty good as well. Um, you got the Wi-Fi and that works well. Bluetooth works fine. GPS though does not work that great. With the older MTK6750 on this phone, um, you're seeing a lot of jumping around and it takes a while for the uh, GPS to lock on this phone as well. So again, it's not a most perfect experience for GPS, but it will do in a pinch, especially if you really need that GPS navigation or if you're lost, it will work. So let's talk the camera here. Um, the camera on the back here is a 20 megapixel camera. And I have to say that I'm fairly impressed with the photos that Qbot is able to output on this phone. I think they did spend quite a bit of time on the camera software. I won't say they spent a ton of time, but they did spend enough time that I was surprised by the quality of the photos that are being output by that camera. Now, in good lighting conditions, the camera here is pretty good. Um, you get some okay detail. It's not a great amount of detail, but it's definitely enough if you just wanna to post to Facebook. But where I'm fairly surprised by is the color. The color reproduction here is actually fairly good and really gives the photo a certain amount of life to it. So I'm fairly impressed by that. The HDR here does a decent job as well. Especially if you're in a situation where dynamic range is uh, pretty bad. For example, if you're taking directly at the sun, it does a decent job, um, equalizes that those dark and bright spots and makes the pictures look a lot better. You do tend to get a few lens flares like JJ Abrams style, um, but those are pretty few and far between, but they are more than other phones that I have seen. Now let's talk about the areas where this camera has trouble with. It's hard to take photos of fast moving things. You do have a lot of blur that you do see introduced into the photo if you try and take it. For example, my dog, you see that there's a lot of blur in this photo as my dog's trying to move as I'm taking a photo. The Boca mode here is also fake, so don't even try to use it. It's um, the stupid circle type. And the front facing camera here is pretty average as well. Quality is actually, I think, a little bit below average uh, in certain situations, but if you have optimal lighting, the uh, camera quality on the front camera is average at best. Now let's talk about video quality. The video quality, uh, <laughs> the video quality here is very good 720p video. So it lacks detail for 1080p. Um, it looks like a very good 720p, but a pretty bad, pretty blurry 1080p video. It does capture motion pretty well. Um, the colors are actually pretty good as well. So again, if you're buying this one for the uh, video camera, then don't buy this phone because the camera here, the detail is just not that great. So my thoughts on the Qbot X18 Plus. I have to say that this is a very well-rounded phone from Qbots. Um, you don't get any errors which are very lacking in comparison to the other areas of the phone. For example, the build quality here is solid enough. I don't like the glossy finish, but that's a personal preference. The display here is pretty good, no complaints there. The audio here is also not bad. I think it'll satisfy most people. The battery life here is also not bad. You get about six hours of screen on time, which again is adequate for pretty much a lot of the population, unless you're crazy like me or other reviewer who needs like 14 hours of screen on time. In that case, you get a Xiaomi Redmi 5 Plus, a pretty easy decision. And the software here is uh, not bad. You get Android 8.0 Oreo with treble support, so very good. Um, and in terms of the multitasking and speeds, it's actually not bad. You do see some delay when you're launching apps, but that's to be expected with the older MTK processor in this phone. Um, and with regards to network bands, obviously USA, don't buy it. If you're in Canada, um, Rogers works, but you should still consider pretty long and hard, especially where you live. And when we're talking about the camera, it's a 20 megapixel camera and the camera here is okay. The 20 megapixel camera here can take some decent photos, but photo quality is definitely not up there with the more expensive phones and definitely does not match up to a Redmi 5 Plus. The video quality here is especially surprising. It resembles 720p more than it does 1080p in terms of detail as well. So do I recommend this phone? Well, again, if you put this beside a Redmi 5 Plus, absolutely not. The Redmi 5 Plus beats this phone in pretty much every way and it's pretty much the same price, about 180 bucks. Now, if this phone was on sale, then again, you still have the Redmi Note 4 to contend with for about 160 bucks. So this phone would have to be really cheap, maybe like 130, $120, or maybe even 140 maybe, um, if you can afford that for this phone to be worth it. But if it's 160 and up, don't buy this phone, get the Redmi Note 4 and a Redmi 5 Plus, but it's, if it's below 160 bucks, then you can consider the Qbot X18 Plus. If you like more videos like this, why not subscribe? It's free. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.